The worst part about it, I mean, parents are well-meaning. The physicians were well-meaning. They were doing what they thought was best for their child or for the individual. <coughs> well, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. What the John Jones case is, is uh, two identical twin boys were sent to uh, have uh, circumcision. They needed the circumcision because of a, uh, of a foreskin problem. And uh, what happened during the uh, circumcision was the child, one of the childs uh, had his penis burnt off. The anguished parents uh, wanted to know uh, how to solve this problem. Um, they were advised by this uh, psychologist uh, from uh, Johns Hopkins, a well-known university. Uh, his recommendation was, well, a male without a penis uh, doesn't get along in, in society, so it'd be better uh, if that child were raised as a girl. Now, I think, I think, I'm, I'm biased in this because I had challenges our way of thinking. Uh, he had thought that people are born without any uh, bias one way or the other. They're neutral, as it were. He used the term uh, undifferentiated, but basically he thought that you can raise a kid any way you want. And if you raised it in a blue room, figuratively, it would be a boy, and if you raised it in a pink room, it would be a girl. And uh, he presented it as this were true, because he, the boy that had his penis removed and was being raised as a girl, he was castrated, had uh, his, uh, uh, was given estrogens at, from the age of eight, So now the child who is now being called uh, uh, Joan uh, um, was supposed to be, was being raised as a girl and of course didn't know anything about uh, how he got to be there. His parents didn't tell him anything. In fact, he was being raised under four particular rules that uh, Dr. Money assigned. One was you... Uh, all children are born neutral. That means they're not swayed one way or the other uh, toward male or female or whatever. <clears throat> the other is that they should never be told anything about uh, uh, the way they were, they came to that situation. In other words, how this individual lost his penis or did had genitals that didn't look appropriate. In any case, and they were told also not to allow any doubt and don't allow any change. So anyway, with, with that as a background, um, the child was supposed to grow up to be a healthy woman, heterosexual, and uh, happy. Unfortunately, that's not what actually happened. I only found out about that because I went looking for the psychiatrist that supposedly was taking care of him or had some idea about it. And when I finally found the psychiatrist, he was willing to help me uh, get in touch with uh, John Joan. And uh, that's when I finally met, uh, turned out he called his name, he, he renamed himself David, and he took that name because he said he fought against the world, the giant against him, and that's David against Goliath. It turned out that he hated being raised as a girl. That didn't fit into the way he was interacting with the world. He felt that he had things more in common with the other boys he knew. 
he didn't have things in common with the girls he was supposed to be uh, de dealing with or playing with or whatever. And the, by the way, the girls, of course, knew that or acted as if he wasn't a real girl because he wasn't doing what girls do, even though he was being reared as a girl. He wanted to do what the boys were doing. The significance, and this is, I think, to me, the most important thing, is that children around the world that are born with what's called ambiguous genitalia were being raised in according with Dr. Money's ideas, which meant that one of the concepts of that was that the child, however was to be reared, had to have genitals that matched that. In other words, if you're going to re uh, raise someone as a boy, the boy ought to have a penis. If you're going to raise the individual as a girl, she ought to not have a penis. Well, with these kids that are born, and these are not few, maybe one in 2,000 or so, is born in every hospital around, that we know of. Um, one in every 2,000 has genitals that don't look typical. Di physicians, well-meaning as they are, thought, used to think, and using uh, Dr. Money's ideas, thought we could, they could rectify the situation by doing surgery. Now, if you have somebody whose genitals are ambiguous and you're going to do surgery and it doesn't make a difference which way the child go is presented as male or female, the decision was almost always m to make it into a female. Why? Just surgically easier. The expression they use, it's easier to dig a hole than build a pole. And, uh, uh, but that reflects that phrase reflected the surgical reality. So many of these kids well, that were genetic males were being raised as females. When they got to puberty or sometime along that path, they said, the heck with that. They told whoever was their parents or their doctors what that didn't fit with them. Now in John Jones' case, when he got to be 14, being raised as a girl, being given estrogens, having been castrated, all of these efforts made to make him into a girl, he said if he couldn't live like a male, he would commit suicide. And that's when they finally told him the story and he converted immediately to live as a male. These children now had to live lives that didn't fit in with their own biases. They wanted to do A, but they're told to do B, and they're bullied or chastised or whatever when they go across <clears throat> what they're supposed, society wants them to do. And uh, it leads to travesties and a lot of hurt.